three, two, one. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back with a very special video. We got the five fingers of death, Tower of God. Yeah, hey, amen. We say it all the time. What a time to be an anime fan. But in this case, what a time to be a subscriber of this channel. I'm not going to lie. It's always a move when we get to do these. But especially when we get to talk about Tower of God, I'm not going to lie. This one is very special. We have a very special guest doing it with us. Cool, man. Thank y'all for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I've been, uh, Y'all guys been supporting me pretty much since I started up and I tapped in with y'all. So glad I could join y'all and, and talk about one of my favorite, one of my personal favorites. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man, Tower of God has been a very interesting story and very interesting mm -hmm. ride so far. Mm -hmm. But just to go into the five fingers before we go into that, if you are new here, then you probably don't know what they are. So, Carlo, do you want to let them know? Yes, sir. So the five fingers of death, for those who don't know, is the five categories that we decided were the most important when it comes to judging and grading in anime, starting with finger number one, story writing, the overall plot, quality of the story, stretches of story writing, how they all blend together, all of that. How well did they do with the story? That's our first finger. Our second one characters gotta have good characters how good are the yes, quality sir. of characters how many characters have amazing quality the overall bag of characters how well did they do our third finger relatability how relatable are the characters how relatable is the story how relatable is the anime itself pretty self-explanatory our fourth finger being scene execution which encompasses everything from hype scenes, vanilla scenes, uh, sure. fights, animation, music, everything combined. How well did the scenes hit? Did they hit how they were intended to? And last but certainly not least, creativity. How creative are each of the characters? How creative is the world itself? How creative is the anime as a whole? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not going to lie. Tower of God is a very dope animes just starting with the very first uh finger story writing i'm not gonna lie the story is very interesting starting with season one it follows bam just entering the tower and he's chasing after his long lost friend rachel and oh man do we have a lot of feelings on her mm -hmm. but he chases after his friend and he basically links up with Khan on the first floor after the first test. They become friends. And from there, they end up meeting up with a bunch of other people. And they start clearing through the test. And they start administering tests. But overall, the story is pretty smooth all the way to season, all the way to the end of the season until Rachel does that shit. And now we're in season two where we're pretty much riding along with a new word cast. But Bam is on a newer ride, as it seems. But, yeah, the story is pretty young, and the story is pretty fresh. Hell yeah. Like, Tower of God's story, after rewatching it recently, I have a newfound respect for it. Like, just the way that they handled everything. Like, the, the slimy activity that was going on in the tower. Uh, huh. The high IQ plays, I mean, we're going to talk about that again later, but just how all of that ties into clearing the tower itself, let alone the lore that's in the tower. It was really interesting, especially when you want to talk about season one. But when you want to talk about season two, like, it almost doesn't even follow Bab that much. Like, it's like an interesting way that they're going about showing the story, um, having all of these extra parties come into play like the way that they're handling it is interesting it's very different very unique and mm. i would say they have a pretty pretty great story uh, yeah yeah i definitely agree i feel like uh season one really played out almost like uh, um almost like a prologue to a book i mean it's the story before the story starts and i mean I, 
if they would have told season one and flashbacks as season two was going on, I feel like it would have fit right in. Yeah. Like if they would have just started the story with season two and like, you know, this episode, they got this flashback of, you know, him running into the tower chasing Rachel and then yeah. him meeting Coon and Rack and taking the test and everything as you find out that, oh, this person we've been following, oh, that's the same guy from season one. Yeah, I, I I love how they set it up. They go about it in a really, really good way, and it connects really nicely to season two. Mm-hmm. And truth be told, I like how they do that too. Not too many animes have took that turn. I mean, Vinland did it, but that's a whole new story. But when you want to mm-hmm. talk about prologues, like truth be told, I actually really enjoyed season one story, just the mm-hmm. flow of it, like. Everything that it showed us, it felt like BAM was really set up. Like, I'm not going to lie. I had my mixed feelings on him, and it kind of bleeds into characters. But when you want to talk about his story, I think his story alone is just really fantastic. Tragic, yeah. but fantastic. Mm-hmm. And it's not just BAM, too. They gave everybody mm-hmm. their story and their reasoning for yeah. why they're in the tower and, like, all of that, all of the things they did in the tower tied directly into where they came from and who they were. So we're going to talk about that again later, too. But I, I like how they handled it. Like, it wasn't all about them. Because a lot of animes, it's when you have your main character, it's all about your main character. And the, the side characters kind of suffer for it. Tower of God didn't mm-hmm. do that with their story writing. So if yeah, I had yeah, to I grade agree. it. I would probably give this one. I'm not going to lie. I'll give it a 10 out of 10 for a story writing. Actually, okay. I'm going to give it a 9.8. And the reason for that is when you want to talk about in between seasons one and season two, the way that they jump time, like, I feel like that was. It kind of feels like something's missing in between. Like, obviously, there is something missing in between, but I feel like they should have shown us that. Like, they have, they've had a couple flashbacks to that in-between point when he was meeting the other people he was training with and all of that. But I feel like not showing us that, I, I don't know. I, it's kind of interesting how they didn't give us that part. Let alone eight episodes into season two, we haven't seen much of the backstory from that. So I would give it a 9.8, but still very, very solid. It's a very, very solid story. Truth be told, I'm right there with you. If I had to grade it, I'll probably give it like a 9 point, probably a 9.6. Like Tower of God has a really nice story, but truth be told, I think it's a character driven story anime rather than a story driven anime. Even with that, it still tells a really nice story from multiple different characters. Like, every character has their own individual story of why they're, to- why they're climbing the tower and what they're searching for. But, of course, we're following Bam's story, and his story is probably the most unique just because at first he was only climbing the tower looking for someone. Now he's still kind of looking for someone, but it's different now. But his story in general has just been really interesting to follow in this world. Which we'll get to later, but I think the characters kind of carry the story, so I would give it a nine point six. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Like, I definitely feel like it's a character-driven story, and and you see that in the anime. Like you said, the side characters they all you you got to see in Dorsey's backstory. You got to see Coon's backstory. Uh, I can't remember the uh, the uh, the chick who was like, man. I didn't want to climb the tower, but climbing the tower saved her life. He, uh, where he done pulled her off of like the little boat where she was about to die and threw her in the tower. It's, I think, just about every character that got major screen time. I mean, you, a knock, you got to see hers. Um, it definitely connects you to those characters, which I can understand why people felt a certain type of way when in season two, they introduced a whole new cast of characters. 
but then they immediately go into their backstories and do the same thing with those characters. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm right there with you. I'd, I'd probably give it a solid nine for as, as far as storytelling so far. Hell yeah. Hey Amen. Let us know in the comments, how would you rate Tower of God's story writing? But just to segue into our second finger characters. Now, we just said that it's a character driven mm -hmm. story, and I'm not going to lie. Tower of God hit characters out the park. When you want to talk about every character that got screen time getting flushed out, having their their moral code, their moral compass being tested, like every action that they made in the tower, there was a reason behind it that was given to us in at least some sort of detail. Maybe not crazy detail, but they gave us something uh, from their past that ties into it. So I, I like how they handled all of the characters especially in season one when you want to talk about the entire group that was climbing the tower with bam and rage or with bam and then when you want to go into season two that was an interesting choice to have this whole new cast the characters and then do it the same way but i also <coughs> like how they still brought it back to the original group with kun and anak and all of them and how they're gonna meet up on the 30th floor for whatever event it's like i forget exactly what it's called but yeah, the workshop battle yeah the workshop battle yeah so i like how they're tying it together it was interesting to go about it that way but at the same time all the characters they gave us were good um when it comes to bam himself i had issues with bam when i watched it originally just because the first reason is he was the main character, and especially when you want to talk season one, I kind of felt like the main character is not supposed to get carried in his own show. Like, he didn't really have that many moments to shine like that until the very end, which was kind of annoying to me. But also the fact that a personal pet peeve of mine is people saying that they're incompetent and weak and actually believing it. Like, it's one thing to joke about it. Like, if you say something that's not very smart and then you say oh i'm dumb like and be joking about it that's one thing but to actually believe it uh it's not really something that i gravitate towards but after re-watching tower of god especially looking into season two that character arc and mm -hmm. like you said realizing that season one was kind of like a prologue i'm i'm rocking with bam especially now so i think they i think they kill characters oh yeah. man <clears throat> Oh man, did they kill characters? Like, it's easily wow. It just might be their best finger. We'll get to the rest, but mm -hmm. when you want to talk about characters, like you know, somebody once called Tower of God. And side note, I used to not be the biggest fan of Tower of God just because my old watch through of season one was <laughs> skewered by Bam, but. Someone once said Tower of God was just like One Piece. And, oh, man, I started fuming at first. But, <laughs> like, I see the comparison when you want to talk about all the different characters. Like, Tower of God has a really, really deep bag of characters. Starting with the Season 1 cast, I would say, as a whole, it's probably a B-plus cast. Like, it has a really good bag of characters. Bam himself... There's a lot of thoughts, but overall, he's a really good character. Like, he didn't carry season one, but I would argue it wasn't a perfect marriage in season one. And that's why he stuck out like a sore thumb. But at the end of the day, he still had a great development and you still saw the potential in him, which is why it was kind of frustrating watching him at times. But at the same time, his quality as a character was still there. And his impact on the story was drastic, as well as his impact on all the other characters was drastic. So, as a whole, he was a good character. And then you want to talk about Season 2. His development has been through the roof. But staying with the Season 1 cast, Rack is hilarious. Kun is pretty cool. And the rest of the characters are pretty unique. The princesses are pretty unique. Then you go to Season 2's cast. I don't care for Season two's cast the same way I like season one's cast, but at the same time, season two's cast still has individual characters that stick out to me. Like 
the nigga with the horns. I don't remember his name, but I would Damn. say over, yeah, overall, like, they have a really nice bag of characters, and they have a lot of different races. That's another way how it kind of reminds me of One Piece. But overall, I have a really deep bag of characters with quality and quantity. They all have story to them. And they all have lore behind them. So I would say they definitely hit it out the park for characters. Yeah, for sure. For me, uh, the characters are what make the story. I mean, going back to Bomb in season one, if you look at it, before he entered the tower, the only person he ever knew was Rachel. Mm-hmm. Like that entire time. And if you look at her character, you can understand why Bomb was the character he was in season one. I mean, and, and like even the development yeah. from the start of the season to the end of the season, where at the end of the season he he's fairly confident. Like he, you could see that confidence growing in him, and you can see it like everybody else was willing to fight for him. They were willing to take that extra test for him, and so he went from being like, "You really just entered the tower for this person who said they were leaving you. They didn't care about you. Like nothing. They gonna go on there." journey and you follow behind her to at the end of season one everybody's following bomb like every and i mean if you look at the characters that are introduced from the variety of them the different races and then their backstories the the uniqueness of the positions that they have and how that kind of tailors to their personality um the the different uh factions because i mean at the end of it we're introduced to Fug. We're introduced to Rankers. We're introduced to Princesses. Um, we're introduced to Jihad's Assassins. Um, even like the the uh, the animals, the Steel Eels. We meet two different versions. One in the very first episode, and one in that last episode, and they're both different. So yeah, I feel like with characters, that is the in my opinion, the best part of the story. I always tell people who either start watching or start reading Tower of God, pay attention to the characters that are introduced and more specifically their last names. As the story goes on, just that's one thing to, to watch out for um, because like just I'll take what's been introduced so far. So we met Kuhn we know that he's from one of the great families towards the end of the season we meet one of his brothers uh season two very first episode we meet one of the another member of his family uh mashini the princess that yuri runs into then uh when we meet kun's team he has another member team and so it's like just pay attention to like those little things and I mean, just like another one with Yuri, we meet Jin Sung, the old guy that trained Bomb. Mm -hmm. They're from the same family. And so those little dynamics, the little things were like, if you don't really pay attention to it, you'll miss until they talk about it later on. And you'd be like, you know what? They have introduced 10 family members of this particular character and seeing how they interacted with them. So, yeah, I definitely give it on the characters definitely a 10 yeah 100 percent. honestly i'm right there with you too when you want to grade the characters like again it's probably their it just might be their best finger and i have to say Mm -hmm. because looking down the line some of these other fingers are really interesting but when you want to talk about how they did characters they definitely hit it out the park hell yeah easy 10 like the only reason I'm not outright calling it the best finger is because of one other one that we're going to get to <laughs> that might maybe be up there. But for now, definitely characters is the best thing that Tower of God has to offer. For sure, for sure. But then you want to go into the next finger, relatability. Now, relatability is interesting, especially when you want to talk about how relatable the characters are and how relatable the world is. Just in general, how relatable did the anime feel while you were watching it? Like, there were some scenes that hit, but 
I wouldn't say I was getting cut into. Like, when you want to talk about the relatability, I feel like it kind of just depends on what you can relate to. A lot of the characters are definitely humane, even though they're different types of races. So, in that part, they're kind of relatable. Some of them have very relatable stories, like why they're trying to climb the towers. A lot of them don't have any other choice. They're, it's their last stop in life. Like, there's different parts of it that can be very relatable, but it depends on do you have to go digging for it or is it on a silver platter? It kind of varies depending on who the character is. When you want to talk about Bam, he's somewhat relatable. Depends. Like, season one Bam, his personality, I will say, shines. And it can be very relatable. His nature to Rachel was very interesting. But at the end of the day, it makes sense, like, for where he came from. And just in general, I would say... The world itself. The world itself is kind of relatable too. Hell yeah! Like the relatability. Most of the characters you kind of gotta dig. There's some that it's right there in your face. But one of the things that I really found relatable about Tower of God is just how every character's moral compass is getting tested constantly with all the backstabbing, literally, or. Whatever's going on, the snaking of people, like, the thousand IQ plays people have to make just to advance further in the tower, like, everyone's moral code is being tested in there, so I feel like that's relatable to our world, because there's certain things that, even in your everyday life, obviously, not everyone is getting tested to that degree, because holy shit, but at the same time, it does happen, so I feel like that was relatable, and then Rachel is kind of as unfortunate as it is relatable to our world just because of her motive behind pushing bam is i can't shine next to you so i'm gonna bring you down so i can drag myself up and there's a lot of people that think like that in this world as unfortunate as it is like when you want to talk about relatability to our world i feel like that's a, a a big concept um but at the same time like you said it it didn't really like cut me like that when it comes to being relatable but it was definitely there so i feel like they did a pretty a a pretty okay job with it yeah man and i think you can see it uh i mean it starts off saying if you climb the tower you can get whatever you want and so people are doing whatever they can to try to get their wish granted at the top of the tower so like how many people you seen online who you know they're doing all kind of crazy shit they're eating crazy stuff they're you know trying to jump over cars and all that just to make their dream come true i mean you know some of these people at some point they've thrown somebody under the bus i mean they ain't pushed them you know into a bottomless pit but if they had the opportunity they probably would it just you know it so i think uh i think it's relatable but I, it's kind of one of the things with the characters as well, because, I mean, if you look at the characters who actually did want to climb the tower, like Kuhn, Kuhn is uh, he's trying to prove himself that, you know, he's worthy of being from this family. You know, how many people, you know, that all everything they do is to try to, like, make their mom proud, make their dad proud. I mean, Rachel is trying to get to this place that she's never been. I mean, Bomb is is literally following a girl. He's on this whole thing on a woman going through all this stuff trying to get back to her. I mean, how many people you know have have gone crazy for somebody they love? And so I think it's, it's really just like looking at it, individual characters and every I feel like everybody, if they looked at it that way, they they'd probably find something relatable in some character. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, the characters, once again, is probably the best thing Mm -hmm. about this anime. And they definitely carry when you want to talk about the relatability. But if you guys had to rate it, how are you feeling? Me personally, I would probably say like, I'd probably say like a 9.4, 9.5. It really depends on who you're searching for the relatability in. Like, 
I do think the world aspect, the climbing the tower aspect can be very relatable, especially when you put it that way. Like, a lot of people are willing to go the extra mile for their dreams. So that part is relatable. Then you want to talk about all the characters. Depending on which character it is, there's a lot of relatability on a silver platter or something you got to dig for it. Hell yeah. yeah I think I'd give it probably like, I'd probably give it an 8.5 because you're right. Like some of it, you got to dig for it. You got to, I mean, there's some of it that hadn't been shown yet. So at that one, I'd probably give it like an 8.5. Okay, okay. I, I would probably give relatability, I'll probably give it like an 8.7. Just because even though there's, as we've pointed out, there's a lot of places where you can find that relatability. Um, there's a lot of digging you have to do, a lot of soul searching to really relate to it, aside from one or two characters. But it's definitely there. Um but I, yeah, I would probably I'll probably give it like an eight point seven overall. But, okay. Hey man, let us know in the comments. How would you rate Tower of God's relatability? Let us know. But just to segue into our fourth finger scene execution. This one is interesting. When you want to first things first, starting with hype scenes. There's not many hype scenes in Tower of God but there's a couple and they're they're pretty good too like especially when you want to talk about some of the fights in season 2 that we've gotten like it's not the craziest thing in the world but I can tell the way that they're scaling the verse introducing this other character whose name I forgot because I just watched it uh, <laughs> the, the dude that had the back tattoo you know what I'm talking yeah, about Yurik you're Mazano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mazano, yeah. Like, introducing nah, characters I, like that, that scale so high is like, I cannot wait to really get into where the hype scenes really come at. But as far as hype scenes right now, the ones that we did get, they were cool. Yeah, like, honestly, when it comes to hype scenes, it's not really that kind of anime where you're getting, like, jumping off your seat but at the same time there was a lot of moments where your arm hairs may have went up like i would say there's a lot of moments where the scenes definitely delivered the way it was supposed to but i wouldn't necessarily say it was overall hype yeah 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 i agree you're right those there are particular scenes and i mean some of them aren't even fight scenes mm -hmm. that, that are i guess would would be those hype moments and i mean i guess that that's one of the criticisms that a lot of people have that, oh, it doesn't have these long, drawn out fights like a One Piece or, you know, a Naruto or something like that. Most of the fights in Tower of God are quick. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to be honest, I feel like that's more realistic because, I mean, looking at like a One Piece, you'll have a fight that will last ten 20 days. episodes. Yeah, yeah, 10 days. But who, you know, really fighting for 10 days, most fights, you know, that they're over in less than a minute. Yeah. And yeah, and so I feel like the fights are relatable, but those emotional scenes and those, like you said, those were their big brains and their plots. Those are where so far in Tower of God, I think that that's where they're hitting. That that's what they're hitting on. Hell yeah, and especially like the scenes where nothing's happening, like when they're just chilling. I really like mm -hmm. how they added that to Tower of God, where they're just. When they get to the next floor and they're just chilling till the next test starts and we get to see them interact with each other. I feel like that's one of the biggest reasons why we're so invested in these characters aside from their stories themselves. Like just getting to see them actually form a team and have these team bonding scenes. All the vanilla scenes. Yeah, all those vanilla scenes where they would just be at the table eating together or whatever the case, whether they're in their rooms or anything like that those scenes really hit um but you're right like the the scenes where they're really showing off their iq and all of that those are the scenes that are really top notch in tower of god yeah yeah i mean what was it that uh scene with coon in the bar with the guy who's fast mm -hmm. like that one i mean he he was thinking three, four steps ahead of this guy. He knew that he was going to go this way. 
he knew he probably had the guy thinking he outsmarted him. And he knew that, you know, I told him this lie. He's going to think everything else I've said is a lie. Yep. He didn't, he's not thinking that I hired people in this bar because I lied about this. And, like, that was one of the dopest scenes of this season so far, just showing how he'll use his brain, not necessarily his muscle, to get what he wants. Yeah. Like, even when you want to talk about Coon season one, I'm not going to lie, you might be one of my favorite characters easily. Like, mm-hmm. When you want to talk about that season one hey, play he- on the ranker, like, mm-hmm. when they were in that, it was like the, the elevator going up and the person had to get away. Like, the play he made to make sure his team won, but the people he was actually taking the test with, only the people that were actually on his team got to pass with him. Everybody else failed. The way he set that up and orchestrated that, I'm like, yo, this dude's a <laughs> mastermind. But it's mm-hmm. not just him. Even uh, the guy that just got spared in season two, but after he uh, after he off the little boy, like his play, like I didn't think he was gonna. I knew he was this grimy individual, but I didn't think he would go to that length, like with his planning mm-hmm. and everything like that. So just seeing this stuff play mm-hmm. out, these scenes are crazy because you don't see it coming. Yeah, yeah, at all, and I feel like that's that's one of the things because. For me, anyway, that like got me into it whenever I first started reading Tower of God, because I mean everybody has their own motive and their own agenda, and their I mean, because their goal, even though they're working on the team, their goal is to get to the top of the tower. Not, I mean, not necessarily to get the team to the top of the tower. And I think that's one of the things where like shifting the focus in season two, it kind of showed it that like. They built this team in season one. Now in season two, Bomb has a separate team. Kuhn has a separate team. And I mean, we don't know about anybody else. We don't know about Rock or Knock and Dorsey. I mean, we've seen scenes. I don't think we've seen a scene with Rock, but I think we've seen a scene with Dorsey. I think we've seen a scene with a couple of other people, but we don't know if they're still with the same teams. And I mean... So I think that uh, I think that's one where I'm trying not to spoil it that that'll end up like being a big part of the story that that's something to watch out for going forward. Hell yeah! But all in all, scene execution there was a lot of great scenes in Tower of God up until this point. If you had to rate it out of ten, what would you rate it? For me personally, mm. I would give the scene execution. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a nine point two. Like the scene execution was hidden. I know a lot of people, and I'm not gonna lie, I was one of those people when Tower of God first came out. I didn't really like how it was animated, but that was early into my anime watching career or on the earlier side. So I wasn't as mature as I am now when it comes to watching anime. So. I didn't really watch it with as much of an open mind as I should have, but I'm not going to lie, Tower of God scene execution, it'd be hidden just because of the the unknown and the mystery that comes with it, like the when a new character is introduced, or a new faction is introduced, or Bam starts charging up some uh, Shinsu or whatever the case, it usually hits, so I would give it a 9.2 out of 10. Okay, yeah, I think one of the interesting things about the scenes, uh, I don't know, I, I guess like from reading the manhwa and then seeing it animated, I feel like some of the scenes, they hit out of the park, like they 10 out of 10. And then some of them are, they, and I guess some of it is the stuff that they cut out. So like, I think it was, yeah, this last episode where, the guy with the fire who who had, I guess, like the little chicken or whatever that Wong Nam was trying to act like. And when Bomb showed up, the guy's like, oh, I got three bangs. What are you going to do? And Bomb has five. And so in the Manwa, that was like a big deal. It, it seemed like they made a big deal about that. But then in the anime, it was kind of glazed over. And there's been a couple of scenes like that where 
I feel like it could have been extended and the impact probably would have been bigger. But then there are some things that they've added in, like the thing with Emily, um, you know, this whole time where it's going back and forth. That's not you get introduced to the Emily around the same time. And some of those scenes are the same, but it's a little bit more spread out. And so I feel like compacting that, that made an impactful scene. You know, it gets to the end and you see, oh, Emily's an actual person. But she's talking like she's a, she's an AI, like she's a computer. And so, yeah, that, I, so I, it's a mixed bag with the scenes for me. I mean, I, I don't know. I'd probably just with that, I'd probably give it an eight. Okay. Okay, for me, it's kind of tough for seeing execution. I think I'll probably try to. I think I'd probably give it like a eight point eight, eight point nine. Like, I think the scene execution was really smooth for the most part. Like, especially the vanilla scenes. Like, I like the transitions from vanilla scenes to action scenes or hype scenes. Like, mm-hmm. for the most part, they all hit the same. Like you're kind of locked in the same way. Like, I kind of find myself pacing a lot of the times while watching or just kind of Mm -hmm. rocking back and forth just because it was one of those kind of animes. Like, I feel like a lot of the scenes hit the way they were supposed to, like, especially the really big ones. Like, when you want to talk about Rachel pushing Bam, that Mm -hmm. scene really hurt my soul. But at the same time, I think a large part of that was just because of how it was executed. Like... All she did was get up and push them. But at the end of the day, it was so much more than that. Like, I think a lot more scenes were a lot more hype just because of how they executed it. Even though when you look at what was going on, like, you know what I mean? Like, overall, I think I'd probably give the scene execution. I'd probably give it a flat nine. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, there were some scenes that, like, like some of the scenes with, with, uh, Jin Sung, the guy who trained Bomb. And and then I feel like and I'm biased on part of this. He's one of my favorite characters in the story. Is I mean, as you are introduced to him, he is another one of those character things. It's like he's this, you know, jolly old mentor type character, but it's like, don't get it twisted. When he came there, he came there to kill them. Like, it wasn't like a, you know, oh, he's coming, dropping in to check on Bomb. He's like, no, I'm here to kill y'all so we can replace y'all and he can get get the move in. And it's one of those that it wasn't a really impactful scene. It was just kind of casually dropped. And then even the second time when he came back, I think this past episode, I think he said the same thing. He was like, y'all need to separate from him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's either that or we kill you. Mm. And it, it, the second, the second one was kind of a little bit more impactful, but like there were some of the introductions, like Karaka. You meet he's the guy within like the in like the metal mummy suit. Yeah. And so they made a big deal about Bomb being a Slayer candidate. Well, they introduce a Slayer, and it's like. It's just almost like a back. He's a creepy character in the background, but I mean, I don't even think they gave him ominous music. Yeah. And so it's like some of those little scenes that I feel like were a little off. I feel like they could have played that up a little bit more. I mean, but yeah, I, and I think that's why I rated it so low. It was just some of those scenes that I feel like they just could have did better. Oh, okay. right, I feel that. I feel like well, we, we're kind of we kind of have an advantage as not reading the manhwa because mm-hmm. we don't have any expectations going into it. So just mm-hmm. off of that, when you want to talk about scene execution, we're not expecting the scenes to be a certain type of way. So yeah. our ratings are going to be a little bit different just off of that. So it makes sense. Mm-hmm. I feel like Tower of God's scene execution plays a lot off of the story just because of the unknowns that come with it. Like when something is there's so many reveals that go on in tower in tower of god so it's like every time you get a reveal you get a brand new scene that hits you differently like uh bro that just pulled up with uh maximo or how, that's the name right 
It's like Maximo or something like that. Something Maximo. like that. Uh, the the dude with the back tat. Oh yeah, uh, Mazzino. Mazzino, Mazzino, yeah. Like him pulling up his in- entrance when he was just sitting up top and he was kind of in the shadows and he had the red eyes. Like scenes like that hit because we have no idea who mm-hmm. this is. They look super yeah. strong just off of that image right there. And then you reveal him and he has a, he has a hat backwards. He got blonde hair. Like that's not what I'm expecting him to look like. But <laughs> scenes like that hit different because we don't know what we're getting. Yeah, he's uh he's themed at the Eminem. You know, he kind of reminded he kind of reminded me of Anaru a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they both are. Yeah, they, they, oh, yeah. yeah, it was like a a blog post or an interview that SIU did after he introduced that character and said that you know at that time he was big in the hip hop and that was when I think that was like. And Eminem made his first little comeback or whatever, and so he was like real big into it. So he drew the character based on Eminem. Yeah, that's a I respect thing. that. But well, hey, man, let us know in the comments what do you think about Tower of God's scene execution, and how would you rate it on a scale of one to ten? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Especially when you want to dive into the very last finger. I'm not going to lie. We kept saying characters. It's debatable if it's the best finger. The reason for that is because of creativity. When you want to talk about Mm -hmm. how creative the characters are, as well as how creative the overall world is, and just how creative the anime is, I'm not going to lie. Tower of God is extremely creative, starting with Mm -hmm. the world itself. It reminds me of so many different animes. It kind of reminds me of, of Sword Art Online a little bit. How they have to go through clearing levels. It kind of reminds me of One Piece. How it's so huge. There's so many different places that connect. And there's so many different races of people going into the characters. The characters themselves are extremely creative too. Like Bam himself is very creative. His design is creative. And his story is creative. But so are all the other characters. Like Rack. Khan, pretty much all the princess of Jihad's, like everyone. Overall, I would say Tower of God, they knocked the creativity out of the park. Hell yeah. Hell mm. yeah. Like, when you want to talk about the world, the tower itself, it's like every two episodes or so, they add more layers to it that's just out of this world when it comes to being creative and different from the last one, let alone the when you want to talk about the characters themselves, uh, the different family dynamics, the different weapons they can use, the power system with Shinsu, and whatever other powers that people end up having. I don't, like, there's a lot of stuff that we still don't even know about that we're seeing, and it's like, I can't wait for that to make sense, just because of how creative it is. It's like a Mm -hmm. foreign concept on every level, every floor, every test is different. Like, not all the tests are physical. They're all, a lot of them are mental. Like the the test they took in season one with the doors, and they had to just mm-hmm. walk through a door before the time ran out. And it's just like be decisive and open it. Like having tests like that is very creative. Um, but the tower, man, like the tower yeah. itself is crazy, and yeah. they're not even on floor thirty yet. No, <laughs> like that's crazy. I don't know how many levels are in it, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot more than thirty. So we got a yeah. long way to go. They're gonna keep on stacking on top of that tower with the creativity. They definitely killed it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even just looking at the characters and and I mean every couple of episodes we're introduced to a new species of character that looks completely different yeah some of them do look like humans and you know but they'll have like wang nan he has like the little horns in the back and then exactly dorsey yeah she has fangs rock is is, is he's a big ass alligator <laughs> i mean even if you look at the different families of people how coon's family they all have blue hair and you know they're known for being witty and uh, what was uh, uh, Iwa, the girl with the fire, and apparently how that's her family's thing. And 
um even it, like the little uh the little pig flower the uh the the ziguna and how like all these different creatures and stuff that you're meeting that that's that's the stuff that i love I, i've always been into like fantasy stories and books and how people can make things different and i think siu has done like a really good job of that just not making any two characters the same, not making any yeah. two floors, any two tests the same, um, not really even making their powers. The people power, all of their powers are different. And I mean, what we've probably been introduced to 50, 60 characters mm -hmm. so far, and they've all been different. And so I'm right there with you, like that creativity. Uh, it's, well, I've said it before, I feel like it's right up there with One Piece. Especially, yeah. like, when you add in, because we didn't talk about this yet, so I'm going to throw it in there, like, the references they make to other stuff, like, <laughs> when uh, Dan got slumped and hit the Yamcha death pose, <laughs> I was crying <laughs> laughing, like, they had him in the crater and everything, like, seeing mm -hmm. Zoro standing in the back, like, how yeah. did these little references, even with the, with one of the tests, when they were on the, uh, the big alligator thing, and they were saying it was, like, they they worshipped it as a god, and then it roared, and it sounded like Godzilla. Like mm -hmm. having all of these references makes it so much better. But it's like their own little spin on all of these references. Aside from Zoro, that was a carbon copy. But the other ones, it's like <laughs> their own little spin on it. And I think that's a creative touch as well to kind of give the audience that's seen a lot of this stuff like a a good little chuckle while watching. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Creativity might just sneakily be their best finger. Like, I know we said they knock characters out the park, and when you want to talk about how creative the characters are, is out the roof. But just off of that, that's all the more reason why creativity was done amazingly. Like, everything about the anime is creative, and... I think that's one of the things that's very special because, like you guys said, there's over 50-plus different characters that we've been introduced to, and they are all good characters, too. They're not just random characters. So for them to all have different fighting styles, different designs, different everything, I think that alone is extremely creative. Like, the fact that you could put Tower of God in the same sentence as One Piece for creativity speaks volumes for just how creative it really is. So I would say for creativity, it's easily a 10 out of 10. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Easily. But, hey, man, that's the five fingers. That was a pretty interesting rating for category by category. But if you had to overall rate the series as a whole, how would you grade it? Hmm. I'd probably give it a solid. I probably and just going on where the anime is now. I'd probably give it a solid, solid nine nine point five. I mean, it's still at that point. I mean, if you look like some of the classics, like One Piece and Naruto and all of that, like they had a solid maybe season or two to build their characters and to build the world and everything and i mean i feel like it's really just been recent to where people expect you know all of the character development the world building and everything to be knocked out in in 12 episodes and and thinking about like that's not how things used to be and i feel like tower of god has taken that approach of no, we're going to build the characters. We're going to build the world. You're going to see them grow. They're not going to come in and just be like dominant. They're growing while you while you grow with them in the story. And so, yeah, just based on that, I think I'd probably give it a solid 9.5. Okay. I, I definitely respect that. And what tier would you put it in? Mm. I would probably, if we putting it in, uh, you know, S A B C I, I put it in S. Okay, okay, I respect that. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. It, when it comes to rating Tower of God as an anime, I would probably give it. I would probably give it, as of right now, while we're recording this, 
It is season two, episode eight is out right now. So season two is not done yet, but at the moment I would rate Tower of God a 9.2. And the biggest reason why I would give it a 9.2 is over the years of watching anime and especially watching One Piece, and this goes back to how you related it to One Piece and how it's so similar, like world building is very important and i didn't really understand the value of it until we started doing youtube and watching all of these different animes like world building can go a long way to the point where tower of god already gets a 9.2 even though it's only been 20 episodes like or 21 21 i think 21 episodes like 21 tower of god yeah the way that they handle all of their characters, everyone having their own different story, everyone pushing their own agendas, the world itself, the just and this is just the tower. You have characters just getting introduced that want to go outside the tower. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but just having that idea itself like is so creative. The story writing is carried by the characters, but it's still there and a lot of characters have their stories like Let alone the fact that it's following more than just Bam. Like, I feel like that's a really big part of why I rate it so high. Um, Because we have Kuhn trying to prove himself in his family. Like, you got all of these characters, all the princesses of Jihad trying to... They were fighting over the swords, like, fighting each other. They're supposed to... They're stepsisters, technically, and they're fighting each other for it. Like, having these dynamics and storylines running while they're climbing the tower while they're snaking each other i think it's amazing so far and i would probably give it a 9.2 out of 10 as an anime and if i had to put it in a tier i would probably say i would probably say a minus right now that's pretty much where i'm at like when you want to talk about rating it or well, starting with rating it I'd probably give it like a, I'd probably give it like a 9.4, 9.3. Like, I'd give it a 9.4. I really love One Piece. Like, it's amazing. But one of the amazing things about One Piece is, well, there's a lot. But one of the amazing things about One Piece is world building, as well as characters. And that's two things that Tower of God does amazing. Like, the story writing is good it could be stronger but it's carried by the characters which is knocked out of the park there's so many to choose from that bam doesn't have to be your favorite but then you want to look at bam he's a really good sleeper mc then you want to keep going on to the rest of the fingers the relatability was kind of there but the scene execution was different and the creativity Tower of God is really one of the most creative animes I've ever seen when you really dive deep into it. So I would definitely say this is a really nice anime after 21 episodes, and I would give it a flat-out 9.4. And if I had to put a tier in it, I think right now, I think I would give it an A-. Hell yeah, hell yeah, but hey, man. That's the five fingers of death. For Tower of God. Let us know in the comments how you felt about all five of the fingers. Story writing, characters, relatability, scene execution, and creativity in the comment section. And what grade would you give Tower of God and what tier would you yes, put sir. it in? Let us know in the comments. But, hey man, if, you, if you're if you new and you haven't already, hit that big red subscribe button. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. And turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss our next five fingers of death or any of our other special videos we drop straight bangers on this channel so make sure you guys tap in with us with that being said make sure you guys click on our description there will be three links waiting for you one will take you to all of our socials sons of tokyo yes, on sir. every platform the second one will take you to our discord you feel come me? on in come on in you know what i'm saying join that discord come vibe out with us talk about anything anime non-anime sports movies it don't matter and last but certainly not least the third link will take you to our special guest social medias. Make sure you guys go check him out. Follow him on everything. Straight bangers over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Thank y'all for having me, man. It's been good. I enjoyed this. Yes, sir. Thanks for sliding. This was definitely a very amazing one.
Yeah, yeah. for sure. Glad I could get y'all to watch it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, hey, man, with that being said, SOT out.